Intro. My dear friend, Lori Seacrest, once said, if you want to master anything, teach it or write about it. I took her advice to heart. I've been doing this for around 20 years now. For most of my life, I've been researching the great mysteries of life. I love to learn. That is my passion. I love to think outside of the box. During the last 10 years, I've been studying the lines of this book. You are your own master chemist. I've been interested in science and heightened awareness since the 70s. There in the 80s, I went to Robert Monroe's Gateway Program for a week. He was a pioneer in hemisync. This technology <laughs> is still being used today. This has been the evolution in learning. When I first started to learn how to meditate, there wasn't much science behind the mind, body, and soul connection. The phrase, being in the zone, was a new concept that just came out. My dear friend Tim Galloway wrote the book, The Inner Game of Tennis, in the early 70s. He's been at it ever since. Many professional coaches and athletes give tribute to their success for the wisdom gained from Tim. When this book came out, I was only around 20 years old. This book was one of the doorways I took on my lifetime pursuit of gathering inner wisdom. My meditation practice was learned when I was in India. Here's an excerpt from his webpage. What is the inner game? In every human endeavor, there are two areas of engagement, the outer and the inner. The outer game is played on an external arena to overcome external obstacles to reach an external goal. The inner game takes place within the mind of the player and is played against such obstacles as fear, self-doubt, lapse in focus, and limiting concepts or assumptions. The inner game is a proven method to overcome the self-imposed obstacles that prevent an individual or team from accessing their full potential. Just yesterday, I wrote this in an article entitled Mind-Blowing. Click on the picture to hear the audio. I hope this book will interest you as much as I. I'm always exploring and fine-tuning the guitar of life. This human body is absolutely incredible. We have the operating system, hardware, and software put in place. You are literally the universe. Every day, new discoveries are mapping how this human body is a gateway to the universe. That is our true nature. This is a story where you are your own master chemist. You control your destiny in life. In each and every moment, thousands of either positive chemicals or negative chemicals are regulated into your body. You control this mechanism by your thoughts and emotions. Let's dive into this subject. Come and join me on this journey. Your body is your drugstore. The art of Taoism <coughs> has been around for thousands of years. I find it quite fascinating that they talk about the elixir of 
of life. This elixir is not an herb or any external substance. This elixir exists inside of us. In India, they talk about the nectar from God that flows within. Yet here we are taking drugs for our ailments. Each drug has a huge side effect. No, I'm not saying don't take drugs. I'm saying maybe there is a better way. For example, in China, you pay your doctor when you are healthy. You don't pay when you are sick. Mind you, in modern China, this isn't always the case. But the point is that you focus on balance and harmony. In our culture, everything is fragmented. We don't focus on the harmony of the mind, body, and soul connection. When I was young, I heard about the concept of being in harmony with the universe. To be quite frank, I had no idea what they were talking about. Here's an example of being out of balance. In my junior year, my parents took our family to Yosemite. It's probably one of the most incredible places on the planet. Yet, I couldn't see the forest from the trees. I was miserable. Why? Because I missed the ocean. Now, that's being out of balance. Before we can begin to be in harmony with the universe, let's try to be in harmony with the planet Earth. Currently, man has divorced himself from our precious Earth. We pride ourselves with the technology that we have, yet we are totally emotionally immature with the Earth. Where am I going with this? Imagine if man was in absolute harmony with the Earth. Can you imagine the wisdom that it has? It might tell you that your body is your drugstore. Every thought, whether positive or negative, secretes over 1,500 positive or negative chemicals. Currently, most of America is totally out of balance. Look at the problems today. I used to work for the USDA. I saw my friends taking up vaping. I couldn't believe how much smoke came out when they exhaled. It was at least five times the smoke from regular smoking. No wonder there is such an epidemic. Imagine there are drugs existing inside of you that are dormant. In order to receive them, you must be in balance and harmony. In each and every moment, we have the opportunity to be conscious and aware. Currently, we are playing the same tapes over and over again. I can guarantee you that these elixirs of life work better than any physical drugs. Your body has the intelligence to produce these for you. How many people listen to their bodies? How many people monitor their thoughts? How many people dive into silence? How many people monitor their actions? You see, there is a moment-by-moment -moment conscious event. When we are unconscious, chaos exists. Look at the world around you. Does it seem to be in balance and harmony? The question is, do you want to change? Are you content with the current conditions? This isn't just Richard on a soapbox. I'm asking real questions. What do you think? You are your savior. Nobody's going to save you except yourself. All the scriptures point the way, but we must walk on this path. This human body is hardwired to find God within. We are on this incredible journey to discover our true nature. We are out of balance, and yet we can learn how to be in balance. These are exciting times. Millions of people are waking up.
play with your chemistry kit. We are all playing with our own chemistry kits. Unfortunately, we aren't aware of it. Many people blow themselves up without realizing it. In each and every moment, thousands of chemicals are being released throughout your human body. Mankind is spinning out of control. We are drinking our own poison. We get angry at someone or political point of view. In the meantime, we drink our angry poison. We then wonder why illness arrives on our doorsteps. The wise man understands the repercussions of negative thoughts and emotions. Moment by moment, one plays this video game of life with awareness. One taps into the infinite ocean of love and compassion. This is our true home. My advice is learn how to change your own chemistry. Remember, you are the master chemist. Only you are playing with your chemistry kit. Ponder this over. This could make your life so much easier. Exit. Stage left. <clears throat> what if I told you the following? You are the universe. <clears throat> you just don't know. Modern day scientists discovering the laws of quantum physics are saying the same thing. Many of them believe that the universe is not a series of random events. These events didn't create life. Life itself created life. You are the sun, moon, and stars walking around in a human body. You were never created, nor will you ever be destroyed. Your body will die, but you never will. You were there before the dawning of creation. You will still be there. When our universe slipped, slept into the night and never comes back again. You see, we are eternal. We are all one with each other and all, and all of life. We have been taught differently. You could say our ideas about life are quite archaic. We truly haven't come a long way since we first appeared on this planet. Maybe in technology and science, we think we've come a long way, yet we're still babies. <laughs> we are still fighting wars on this planet. One out of every six children is hungry in America. We make laws for the rich and ignore the poor. I can go on and on. Eventually, <laughs> emotionally, <laughs> we haven't progressed much. We still fight with each other. We don't know how to control anger. Look at Facebook today. Billions of people are flaming each other. We are adding gasoline to the fire of life. Has the whole world run amok? Yet, there are millions of people waking up. Millions realize they have a piece of the puzzle inside of them. If you want to change the world, <coughs> you must change yourself. Only then can the world change before you. You will see the world with new eyes. If you are eternal, where were you before your grandfather was born? Where were you before the earth was even created? You were the universe. I know that's a, a lot to take in. Yet, it's true. If you break down everything in the universe, it comes down <coughs> to the quantum of multi-dimensional energy. Your mind truly can't grasp this, but your heart can. The finite mind 
can't grasp something infinite. Only your heart can. You see, true wisdom isn't thinking about the infinite. <coughs> true wisdom comes from the silence within you. You can recite the knowledge of all the books on planet Earth, yet one who has discovered the silence within is truly the wise man. Life is truly a paradox. We all have different <coughs> lives to live, yet ultimately we are all one. There is truly no difference between you and me. We have separate journeys, yet at the same time, we all have the same journey. If we look at the quantum level and multidimensional level, our journey is the same. We are all one. If we look at the material level, it seems we are all on a di different journey in life. The world around us is a whole civilization of people seemingly living in a crazy world. In the East, they call this Mayan. Many moons ago, I heard this book. I read this book, The Autobiography of a Yogi. It was written by Paramahansa Yogananda. Yogananda describes this world as watching a movie in a movie theater. You get sucked into the movie, and it seems so real. You cry, laugh, and feel the emotions coming from the actors. Yet, if you turn around, you can see light streaming from the projector. The light would hit the screen and project moving images. The East had this concept for thousands of years. It's only since the early 20th century did our scientists research the laws of physics. Back then, they knew that energy is the backbone of the energy. Yet we still live our lives in the old ways. You see, the universe is kind. The universe is love. The universe is compassion. The universe does not judge us. What if I said that this is a journey from darkness to light? What if this journey is meant to discover your true nature? What if I told you that the ultimate goal is discover you are the universe? You have been living in the material and non-material world for eternity. This isn't your first Gora. This won't be your last Gora. <clears throat> you are on the merry <clears throat> go out of life. You will see that this is the most incredible in the universe. You will discover your true nature. <clears throat> what if I told you that when I was born, humanity was considered new? Millions of people believed in the last days of man, yet we're still here. A great shift has occurred. You may not see it with your external eyes. Imagine during... Imagine building a house. At first, it seems like you have created more dust by dust. A huge cloud will appear over time the dust settles. Well, this planet is going through the train, same transformation. It will take a while, yet the darkness can't live in the light. If you want peace on Earth, you must have peace inside of you. You can't have peace on Earth if you're full of anger and greed. The universe doesn't have an ounce of anger and greed. We do. Our goal is to pull the weeds within and take care of our internal garden. Imagine the whole universe wisdom exists inside of your DNA. <clears throat> if you are eternal, that means you have existed for billions of years. How come we don't know that fact? 
Many of the wise men from the past asked, posed that same question. Their answer was always, you must look within to discover your true nature. Imagine the whole universe wisdom exists inside of your DNA. Yet, we are oblivious to this wisdom. Many people, they say, they have no need or desire to discover their true nature. No judgment there. You see, we're all on different journeys at the same time. We're on the same journey. That's quite the paradox. Did you know the more attention you pay to the universe, the universe starts paying attention to you? That's quite the statement. In the beginning, you have to put a tremendous amount of energy into focusing within. After some time, there's a shift and the universe meditates on you. Inside of your DNA contains every life experience on this planet and beyond. You see, you help create the universe. No, that's mind-boggling if you stop and think about it. Did you know there's a part of you that exists in the entire universe? This is your true nature. Yet we come into this world with full knowledge and over time, we forget our true nature. Even after meditating for 47 years, we only get glimpses of who we were in the past. Maybe there's a reason behind it. We don't want to get stuck in the past. We are at an infinite journey of learning and growth. My twin brother and I have this feeling that we came from a different universe altogether. Where does that feeling come from? I have always felt that I'm a stranger in the world. From the moment go, I knew that I came from the stars. I knew that inside of me, life lies the universe. Yet I didn't know how to tap into it. I always knew that meditation was the key. Yet I thought that only a teacher or guru could show you the way. Yes, they provide tremendous help along the way. Yet, they can't walk your journey. Only you can unlock the door within. I have realized that behind your breath lies the universe. Let's talk about ways that will make your journey in life more easier. Let's talk about right mind, right action. What in the world is that? Have you ever stopped and took a look at what your mind is saying? Most people never do. Have you ever tried to meditate? You will probably see firsthand how the mind is totally out of control. It's like you have a chatterbox talking the entire time you're trying to meditate. The Indians call it monkey mind. The monkey jumps from branch to branch. You can't sit still. Most of us are totally oblivious to this. We aren't aware of this. Yet a person who meditates is totally aware of the power of the mind. All the past masters have said that controlling the mind is the most difficult thing to do in the universe. You see, you can control your mind. You can change how you think. You can overcome all internal obstacles. They say Rome was not built in a day. The journey of life is the day by day moment by moment journey to change your life for the better. You can never clap your hands and say, I have totally mastered this journey. Remember, this journey is eternal. A wise man weeds his garden moment by moment. Before he speaks, he monitors his thoughts. If something such as a negative emotion occurs, he 
will not say it. You see, anger only poisons the person who speaks. Yes, anger puts more gasoline on the fire. Take a look today on Facebook. People are blaming all over the place. So what does this have to do with me? I'm fine. I don't have any problems. I don't need anything. Well, it's not a matter of convincing. Are you taking care of your garden inside of you? Do you even know you have a garden? If you don't know you have a garden inside of you, I will say you will have weeds to pull. Look, I'm not trying to say if you have weeds, you need to pull them. You have free will. Yet I'm saying that tons of weeds makes life more difficult. It's bringing you down. Life then can be a drag. You then can take up vices that aren't good for you. You see, everything begins with your mind and how you think. All your actions are dictated by your mind. Look, we have a president who tweets whatever comes to his mind. It's not filtered whatsoever. Many of his tweets go against the U.S. policy. Yet, he says them. I'm saying your mind dictates your actions. Look at all the traitors in the world today. Look at all the laws which help out the rich yet harm the poor. Look at both political parties. Both of them are so immature. You see, when your mind is mature, your actions will be mature. Right speech and right action will benefit the entire world, not just you. For thousands of years, we have ignored our state of mind. I don't have to say what this has led us to. War, war, and war. Man is always fighting. In all areas of life, we are constantly fighting. Mind you, you're just not on the battlefield, but in every action we take in life. Yet, we think this is normal. Take a look at TV or the movies. We think it's normal to watch horror or violence. We don't think anything about it. It's become so commonplace that we think it's normal. Yet, the universe is not violent. We are. The universe is kind and compassionate. We have forgotten our true nature. We have forgotten that there is a garden inside that we can pull the internal weed. We can change for the better. Look at it. Look at all I'm saying is that you are the universe. You just don't know it. Ponder over these words. If you have gotten to this chapter, I would say that you are open to discovering your true nature. You didn't just put the book down or shut off the audio. In order to build the new, we must take down the old. All sorts of structures works in this matter. If we want peace on earth, we must start with ourselves. Peace is not the absence of war. Peace is a state of mind. When the mind becomes peaceful, you will become peaceful. Most people's minds are quite agitated. It's like a grain of sand in an oyster. The oyster is quite agitated, yet a pearl comes out of it. If we look within, we can stop that nagging, agitated mind. We have never been taught how to become friends with our minds. We've never been taught to pull the inner weeds on a day-to-day -day basis. So much what we know is surface level. We are skimming the surface of the infinite ocean and we think we know it all. 
Only by diving deep into the ocean can we truly understand our true nature. Mystics have been talking about this for thousands of years, yet the majority of humanity wasn't interested. Yet during this age, our own survival as a species is dependent upon discovering our true nation, nature. The age of war and bickering must stop. We all know that we can't continue along our old ways. We are playing the same track over and over again. War, war, and war. How do we as a world stop this insanity? We must all go within and change the track to a new one. We must play the track of kindness, love, and tolerance. We must have the experience that we are all one. We all affect each other. We think we are separate, yet that is not true. Even science has proven that many moons ago. We are all at a junction on this journey we have never been before. There is a fork in the road. One leads to the path of unity, while the other path leads to our own self-destruction. Why do I say this? War can never lead man to peace. War leads to more wars. The weapons only get stronger. Need I say more? We have chosen the path to peace. It may not seem that way, but we have. Light dispels darkness. We see more pronounced the darkness because the light is shining on the darkness. It is nowhere to hide. It is out in the open to be seen. We see this all over the world. Man's exportation is being exposed. The injustices of the past are being revealed. A new dawning is occurring based upon kindness, love, and compassion. The world is refusing to allow the old ways of dominance over others. The world refuses to accept that 1% have more wealth than half the population. There is a peaceful evolution revolution going on. No weapons are needed. People are waking up to their true nature and won't accept the old ways of doing things. Politicians who don't accept and embrace this change will be left behind. You see, politics reflects our emotional state of mind. When a person becomes aware of his true nature, he ignites the light inside and darkness will disappear. That means that a society will have the majority of people <coughs> being kind and tolerant towards each other. They will demand people running for office to truly represent humanity, not big business. Corruption will be a thing of the past. Humanity will rise to a much more healthier emotional level. In all areas of life, tremendous transformations will occur. Through wisdom and dialogue, any problem on earth can be solved. There is a practical solution. By discovering our true nature, this planet will be transformed. Imagine if you are the universe, you can help solve anything. If you are kind in any situation, you will have done your part in changing this world. It's as simple as that, yet only you can do that. Personally, doom and gloom are in the past for this planet. Thousands of people have the same vision of peace on earth. The tools of self-discovery exist inside of you. There is no given path. Each one of you walks on a different journey, yet we all work on this journey of life together. We are all on the same boat, planet Earth. Our journey of transforming this earth is happening between our eyes. Humankind is waking up from his slumber. A new Donnie is happening. The sun is appearing on the horizon. It's a new day.
barriers. The definition of barriers is as follows. A fence or other obstacles that prevent movement or access. We all place barriers in our lives. Some are big, while some are small. Many times, depending upon the belief systems we have, we create them. Mind you, it's just a construct in your mind. It's like an elephant tied by a chain. So it's you, it's been tied down. As an adult, it doesn't know if you can easily break the chain that is tying him down. <laughs> the wise man would teach the elephant with kindness. Over time, the elephant would gather trust in him. Through that trust, the elephant would learn the truth and set himself free. Kindness can overcome any barriers that we have. During these chaotic times, many people think their political party will save them. Consequently, <coughs> they place many different kinds of barriers. I'm right. You're wrong. I hate you. I'm pissed off. <laughs> Anger becomes the norm. Unfortunately, we can't see the barriers we place in our lives. That does not mean if I can't see it, it doesn't exist. Our subconscious is running around 95% of the show. We only have 5% conscious awareness. That's quite slim. How do we remove then these barriers? Just asking that question yourself is the first step. Are we on the Ferris wheel of life? We go around, then around. We are happy, and then we are sad. We love someone, and then we get totally pissed off by someone. We are at peace, and in the next moment, we are at war. We go around and around in a circle. How do, we, how do we go beyond this wheel of life? The masters have come from time immemorial. They have all said the same. Look inside of your heart to answer this riddle. The surfboard is the vehicle to ride the ocean waves. You can take this board around the world and ride the magnificent waves. You paddle out. You encounter obstacles along the way. When the waves are big, you are panting for breath. I made it out. Now what do I do? You wait for a wave to come. Ah, oh, look at that one. I'm in perfect position. You either catch the wave or you don't. The wave doesn't wait for you. You stand up and you made the drop. Your mind is totally at peace. You're in the zone. You made the wave. Or... I'm paddling for the wave. <coughs> I think I got it. Oh my god, I'm going over the falls. It seems like years I'm underwater. Yet only a few seconds go by. The wise man... Man, <coughs> were surfers of their day. They discovered the waves of light. There is an ocean within just waiting to be discovered. Did you know you are a surfer? When I was young, 
My brother and I went for a spin on a motorboat with our dear friend Mark. It took time to go from the harbor to outside the jetty. When we got outside the jetty, Mark turned off the engine. Suddenly, we felt thousands of bubbles beneath us. Never before have I been so excited. A huge wave whale comes to the surface and greets us. I'll never forget those beautiful eyes. The whale knew he could destroy us, but that was on his mind. The whale was our friend. He had nothing to prove. He was majestic. I'll never forget that experience. They say that wine will get better with me. But in the job market today, there's discrimination. I once was laid off and given a great termination package on the condition I would be signing this document. The document said I couldn't sue the company for age discrimination. There was a carrot on the stick. It's sad that folks of Google think you are washed up at 30 years old. They become petrified with age. Their self-worth goes away. I'm no longer needed. What a joke we play on ourselves. The older I get, the wiser I get. Society doesn't seem that way. I'm proud of my life and you can't take that away. Millions of people are older and I like that fine wine. We must change our ways.